Hey everybody, this is uh, Frog Slicer, back at it again with the exact same deck. I'm not done talking about it, so I'm just going to keep going until I'm you know, tired of sharing this with you guys. I finally have it in paper, so that's really what this deck profile is for, is I'm, I'm going to show it off. I had it in paper before, but not entirely complete like this, so... Alright, so to start us off, we have three substitute. This is obviously the, the backbone of the frog engine. Uh, there's really no introduction necessary. Then we have all the other frogs. The, the, main, the main frogs for this deck are Poison Draw and Swap Frog. The strategy is you pull all your frogs out of your deck that aren't these, and then you, you're able to grow your board through other means. Uh, you pull out a poison draw with swap frog from the deck, and then you take a swap frog, which normally when you summon it, it sends a level two or lower water aqua from your deck to the grave. Um, but it, it doesn't have to be from the deck, it can be from the field to the grave. So you'll send back poison draw. It's a ruling that people don't understand, and even after this video, they'll probably still not. People just forget or don't realize, but that's how you do the draw engine. You, you, you expand your board shoot the poison draw with swap frog it doesn't miss timing like it normally would with almost anything and then you get to draw a card and hey you still have these in deck so anything you're able to do to, to widen your board you'll keep on digging through your deck taking out frogs and drawing hopefully good cards so that's the main the main little combo uh, to back us up we have dupe, two dupe frogs for the dupe lock they're also very good for um, yeah, floating if you have to but really they're just there for the dupe block. You need frogs. You need a certain number of frogs to pull out of your deck so that the rest of the deck doesn't just go dead when you're drawing through it. Um, so we have a bunch of other frogs. We have Treeborn, which doesn't actually do anything for the deck, really. It's just really, really good. And uh, for, for games you're not able to combo, it's a really big deal to to have a just a swap frog be able to make a substitute live just by summoning it and passing turn. You know, bouncing it back probably, but Unifrog, it's another, um, you know, just another frog to dump. Flip Flop and Death Frog, those are all the frogs. So these go in the category of like non essential. Death Frog is necessary for making your level 8 synchros, which are important for like making the stable board state that allow you to combo. Um, I use Flip Flop for my stable board state, you don't have to, you can use Flip Flop or Unifrog. Or, if you do have to, you can just have an Exodius out. Um, yeah. So, these are good for like the, the grindy frog plays you have to do to build up to your combo when you don't draw the nuts. Um, but they're also integral to the combo, so it works out both ways. So that's it for the, the frog stuff. These are all support cards they're they're basically just part of the frog engine because this entire deck is just an engine that's how combo decks work but we have three fishboard blasters it's the backbone that's this is the number one way you widen your board uh, with substitute so a substitute in play with a fishboard blaster and grave means you're able to do the poison draw stuff which i run a lot of cards in my deck that let you recycle that plague spreader is like a ghetto version of fishborg um, it does enable you to do some cool like setup plays, but you kind of need it to your 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 combos near the end. So it's just a combo piece. Think of it as like arm of the uh, arm of left arm of the forbidden one or something. You're not really going to use it unless you have to. Um, this isn't goat format, but I do run three thunder dragon. You can you just want the plus one. You know regular combo decks when you're drawing through your deck, it's nice to get a plus one. Uh, typically, you'd get a plus one for something like Hard Destruction or Hand Destruction. I don't run those in here. But Fishborg Blaster is how you use the plus one to draw, to cycle. So that's almost like a Dark, War Dark World Dealings or something. Um, but yeah, so you also need this for your combo. So it's good for, for drawing through your deck, and it's also good for your combo. And then we have the most important part of the combo is uh, Exodius times three. So Exodius, a lot of people don't really know what this card does. Um, it just says... His summoning condition, as a cost, you send back 
every monster in your grave back to your deck. So you send all your frogs to Substitute. You have a Substitute in play. So you take all your monsters, all your frogs from your deck, put them in your grave, draw your deck as best you can, and then, hey, now you have nothing. Go ahead and slam the Exodius. They all go back. Everything you don't want to draw, you just use Substitute again to send it all back to the grave. And everything except for, like, um, the Poison Draw loop with Swap Frog. So you get to dig. You get to extend and dig with this. Um, normally, just, you know, it goes from one card in the hand to one card in play. It doesn't really do much anything. Uh, it is nice because it does enable you to, to get another draw with Swap Frog. Sorry, with Substoat searching for the, the Poison Draw thing. But it's also, it's a plus one with Thunder Dragon. Because normally you'll you'll discard Thunder Dragon for two. Have them in your hand. You need to discard a card to get Fishborg out of your grave before you summon Exodius. Because when you summon Exodius, everything has to go back. So you need to pull the Fishborg out. So hey, now you sent back two Thunder Dragons with the Thunder Dragon in hand when you summon Exodius. Let me just go ahead and get those out right now. So you pull out the Thunder Dragons, then you you know, you'll you'll sack your Exodius to Substitute to get all your frogs out, so now you're back to where you were, but you have nothing but gas in your deck, and that's the whole point. Um, so that's it for the monsters. On the same theme as Exodius, we have more recyclers, more uh, refreshers in the form of Pot of Avarice. I've said multiple times um, along the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! that Pot of Avarice is the most broken spell in the game. You know, it's up for debate, but it's at three in... in Edison format, and it's basically a pot of greed with an upside. So the cost is you have to send back five monsters, but in this deck, you're putting back monsters that are going to draw you even deeper. So you get to use the pot of Aver the pot of greed effect just by virtue of having a substitute because you're really easily to you can very easily put all put all five requirements necessary from your deck to your grave, and just play it for a plus one pot of greed style effect, and then you know send the frogs immediately if you need to. So you're able to dig with that, so it's really important in that way, um, and that's you know copies four, five, and six of cards that extend your your poison draw loop. We run three salvage. Um, it's just a plus one. It's good. Uh, sometimes you'll you'll get back a swap frog to to special summon it to extend for substoad or maybe even to like finish in a dupe lock or something. Uh, but most importantly you use it with Murray of Greed. So it is still good standalone, and so is Moray of Greed. Moray of Greed just says if you draw too many frogs, you can put them back in your deck, and hopefully you don't draw them, so you can send them to the grave with Substoad and just draw good stuff, you know, things that continue your combo. So what you want to do is you want to salvage for Poison Draw and Swap Frog, and then Moray of Greed them back into your deck, and then use Substitute to extend the, the draw loop, you know, one more draw. So that's... These two together is like a ghetto pot of ever. So you have like nine extenders that allow you to use your poison draw loop more than you're supposed to. And once you've exhausted your deck of all the frogs and as much draw as you can, then you want to go ahead and play your upstart goblins. Um, this has higher value than normal. Normally it just says, hey, you have a 37 card deck, but you take all the frogs out of your deck. So the only cards you're going to draw are going to be extenders in the form of these cards or like Exodius or something. It's really good. Then all we have left is some one ups. These are, you know, Fishboard Blaster copies four and five, basically. Um, the only thing you're going to hit with Foolish is Fishboard. Maybe you'd hit Plague, but I've, I've never done it. One for one, again, you'll probably hit it with Fishboard um, or Substo. So you can get a substoad, and it's really nice you can get it in defense, so if you have to give up mid-combo, you have like a, a sturdier board. But what's really cool about this is you can play around DD Crow if you happen to have, if you already have a substoad and a fishborg in hand, you can search for a fishborg, summon the substoad, and now you're playing around DD Crow. Um, alternately, yeah, alternatively, you can just search for another fishborg or a substoad, whatever. This is either or, so this is probably the best card in your deck. And the last two are Imperial Iron Wall, which is why the deck can go infinite. Exodius has a downside that says if he leaves the, the field in any way, then he gets banished. So what you would want to do, what you wish you could do, is you wish you could just use Swap Frog to bounce him back to the hand. And then, hey, now you can keep on doing your plus one and cycling through your deck, all this good stuff. That's only possible with Imperial, Imperial Iron Wall, so that's why we run it. It also happens to be good at protecting Stardust Dragon 
And it's like a stun card against a lot of the metagame in Edison. So right now I'm running one for consistency of drawing that through my deck. But in theory, you could run three and, you know, just play like a slower, more consistent game that kind of locks out some of the, the better decks in the format. And then Giant Trunade, because as much as I've solitaired this deck, you have to acknowledge the reality that sometimes you have to go second. And sometimes they have back row that would just stop you. So we main deck the one Giant Trunade. I have a Heavy Storm in the side. Um, back when people played Real Frog FTK uh, in late 2010, opposed to Edison's early 2010, we don't have Ronin Toten. But uh, it was really common for people to play just Trunade and run 40 cards. The guy who, who won Worlds, he played Giant Trunade and Heavy Storm and 41 cards. So that's, that's an option you can take as well. Um, people like playing Starlight Road. I, I like playing around it. And if, if I know I'm going second, I can pull in the Heavy Storm and, and be comfier there. So that's usually what I'll do. So that's it for the main board. Uh, I call this deck Gotham's Frogs not just combo frogs. You could call it combo frogs. That's what other people like to call it. But I call it Godoms because the win condition is Godoms. The point is you want to summon him and use his effect an arbitrarily infinite number of times. And what you're going to do is you're going to tribute Godoms. Oh, sorry, uh, Urbellum to Godoms. So you get to actually make Urbellum with like a Treeborn, Death Frog, and a Fishborg. Or Bryonic. Um, you know, you, you go Death Frog, Fishborg into Bryonic, and then use Bryonic to sink into Urbellum. And then Urbellum with Plague into Godoms, because Godoms says he requires an Earth non-tuner. He doesn't care what kind of tuner it is. But Fishborg cares what kind of tuner it is, because Fishborg can only synchro with a water non-tuner. So you can use Bryonic to go into Urbellum with Fishborg, but then you need to use the Plague with Urbellum to get your Earth non-tuner to make the Urbellum, to make the Godoms. And then, yeah, the point is you, you get infinite card advantage. You draw out your entire deck. You you use that infinite card advantage to bounce whatever they have. Um, and then maybe you'd recycle and get infinite draw advantage again before you do the loop. But you send everything back to their hand that they had in play. You discard infinite cards. And then, you know, you win from there. So it doesn't matter what they have. Uh, it plays around Hanawada, at least, I guess. Um, but yeah, that, that's the combo. So that's what that's what you're going to be spamming once you're going infinite. But before you go infinite, you you make a Stardust. That, that's my big stable board that I sit on. Is uh, I go Substitute that I used the entire time to combo. I'll go Death Frog, a level two, and a Fishborg to make Stardust. And then I'll use whatever card advantage I was able to generate while I was drawing through my deck to to make the dupe lock with a flip flop frog last. And then I'll have a Imperial Iron Wall to set because you drew your entire deck. So this this is what you were digging for. So you want to have the setup to dig for this so you can make this like board that Stardust will protect. And these two really work well together. And this yeah this also stuns opponents. So it's it's hard for them to to beat you when you have this. And then when you get your turn, everything's loaded, so you get to go infinite. That, that's the that's the whole game plan. Um, the rest of the extra deck is mostly for non-infinite OTKs. So I specifically run two Red Dragon Archfiends because it's relevant in certain non-infinite OTK situations, like I just said. You, you need exactly uh, exactly two of them, depending on different card advantage. I have a bunch of, I have a chart that I have that I follow for different thresholds that I you know meet uh, of card advantage I was able to generate before I go for the OTK. And depending on how much you were able to generate, that's the path you have to take. Red Dragon Archfiend is really only relevant, at least the second one is only relevant for the situation where they have no monsters. So it doesn't come up that often. But almost always you make one when you're doing your OTK plan. If you're not making the second Red Dragon Archfiend, you are making a Mistworm. Uh, and that's that's the same thing. It's like you're, you're ignoring Gores, you're, you're going for the OTK, but they happen to have like three monsters and in those cases when you're otk you actually you should have you should have heavy or giant true nade so this is really just to deal with the monsters and it's really just defense position monsters because if they have attack position monsters even if it has a zero attack even if it has zero attack you want to go for colossal fighter and because depending on how much card advantage you're able to generate because i want to be able to attack over a zero attack monster per game um, I have triple armory arm, and sometimes it's relevant uh, for other situations. Like it's a really easy thing when you're when you're using your cards to to make your board bigger. It's a really easy thing to make 
because it doesn't clog up your board. You can make an armory arm before you refresh your frogs back to your deck. And then, you know, get it out of the monster zone to keep going. So it's, it's an easy way to add damage to your OTK without clogging up your board. And these other cards are just for other situations because you, you don't always do the pseudo FTK. You, you don't always OTK, but you can very consistently do that. Sometimes you're just doing frog stuff. Uh, and sometimes frog stuff means synchroing. And mostly the only things you're ever going to synchro for are these three if you're just doing frog stuff. Sometimes Stardust, but yeah, Black Rose Dragon is really easy to make with um, Fishborg, Treeborn, and Deathfrog. So if you have a substitute, you can do it that way. Um, you could do it without the Treeborn too. You could just do substitute Fishborg, Deathfrog because you're wiping your board anyway. So you can do it that way. Uh, Goyo Guardian, same thing minus the level one. So you could keep the substitute and just use Deathfrog and a Fishborg, and then Catastor. Um, it's not super easy to make, but if you need to be able to make it, if if you need to make it, you're, you're able. And then the last extra deck card is uh, Fortress Dragon in case they're greedy and have Cyber Dragon with their own monsters, then I can get rid of it. Or potentially make a canaster. But that's not these aren't important. This is other stuff's important. So lastly we have the side deck. In my paper version, my side deck isn't perfect. Um, the important stuff's here. So the most important thing I have for my side is I include these. So almost always I'll just side these in. I'll take out the Imperial Iron Wall uh, and Plague. So I, I get rid of my infinite. Uh, and I'll just take in more consistent stuff like Heavy Storm and Extra Tree Born Frog to play around um, DD Crows. I like having one I like having one Tree Born Frog in the main because it's, it's just good sometimes if you have to do play Grindier. And then if they're bring, bringing in the DD Crows anyway, sometimes you'll still have to play Grindy. And it kind of... It's like a catch-22 for them. Oh, am I going to DD Crow the Fishborg like I feel like I need to to stop his combo? But if you don't, then, you know, you your hand's a little bit slower because you have Crow. If it doesn't completely stop my turn, then, hey, now I can do grindy stuff, you know, frog stuff with Treeborn. Especially since I have a second dupe frog, I can just swing for 19 or something if that's relevant. But just having the extra Treeborn makes it an, a harder decision. And also, just adding more frogs makes your deck more consistent because when you're, when you're trying to play your spells to draw you're able to get rid of more from your deck. So you're going to have way more consistent draws when you do your draw stuff. But yeah, you run the second de Death Frog so that you can make more level 8 synchros. Just It makes it easier to hit big OTKs, and it's better for your grind game. And the only reason we run the Beals Frog is for Armory Arm. You could do a level 2 Treeborn and Fishborg, but that's three cards for a level 4 synchro. It's way better to spend two cards to make, to make an Armory Arm. And that's, that's how we do it. Uh, also, it makes it easier to make Mist Worm. Everything else in here doesn't really matter, but I'll just go over it really quickly. Uh, I do like these as side deck cards, MST and My Body. MST is good against Mask of Restrict and Roll Oppression. My Body is good against Deck Dev and Roll Oppression. So, you know, maybe I would consider running, like, a Twister as my second MST. And then, like, another My Body for, like, Torrential and Deck Dev in those situations. But I kind of feel like Heavy Storm, True Nade, and then Siding in both of these kind of covers all your bases. Um, I'd have to play test more to figure that out. But I actually like these. These aren't like fake filler. Um, another Imperial Iron Wall. I've considered having two in the side because Imperial Iron Wall is a good stun card against a lot of decks in the format. So if I could have a good side deck plan to include them, then it would be nice to slow down my opponent's deck and also set up my combos at the same time. Um, so in theory, you could either you know main deck two inside in the third or just have two here somehow have three imperial iron walls because it stops them and helps you brain control is just a generically good going second side deck card it's good with substode so like i can have a substode and brain control and hey now i get to start going so that's nice usually when i don't know what cards to put in my side i put in book of moon it does everything so they usually don't stick around maybe i'll keep one or two in my side but there's kind of all purpose if you, if you have if you run into something you weren't prepared for then Book of Moon kind of covers you. Mirror Force is nice because, um, like it, it probably wouldn't stick around, but I like the idea of like a big gotcha card. Like they weren't expecting a Mirror Force, so like they're extending, they're overextending, they're using all their removal to get rid of like a, a dupe lock. Because if I have a turn and I'm not winning, I'm making a dupe lock basically. Um, so it'd be nice for them to overcommit to breaking a dupe, a dupe lock, and then you know using that overcommitted board to get Mirror Force. Soul Exchange, it's like a, a worse brain control. Um, you know, 
Uh, I could see running like three and then siding in like Mobius or Jinzo. I've definitely considered doing that. So that's a direction to take it. Scapegoat is kind of like a, a win more card. I don't consider it very good because in situations where I would be using it, it's like it's like a really bad threatening roar. Um, that could potentially like enable me to go like maybe they have some three monsters and it blocks three and then hey i have one more monster and substitute gets me there like that's possible for sure but it's just so passive and if i had the substitute i feel like there's other things i could be doing and then a burial in case they dd crow me um this might make it because it's also an extender for exodius which that's another thing to note um, book of moon isn't just a filler extra card both of these cards can extend your your recycling with exodius but it does kind of like just make your turn longer. It doesn't really get you anywhere. Burial does, because if they have Crow, it plays around it. But that, that's just another use for it. So it's not necessarily dead. Even if you don't see the Crow, you can bring it in. Um, and that's really all I got. So, yeah. Um, you guys have seen the demonstrations already. If you know if you've found this channel at all. And it's probably no surprise that this is my, my deck profile. Is this exact deck. I do plan on making some more involved videos for maybe three or four videos even for explaining the nuances of different parts of the combo. If that's something you guys are interested in, um, yeah, you can go and let me know. I guess either way, I'm probably going to do it. Just If you guys are super interested, I might do it sooner. But that's it for me. Thanks, guys.